How we doing, gotcha gang? Kawaii50 here, recommending you watch Fate Zero before Fate Stay Night, here to talk about a man who finally got what he deserves, and that is Diermuid, who finally got a Saber incarnation. Why is this so good for him? Well, let's find out. And if you like what I've told you, go ahead, like this video, and maybe subscribe for some more content. Diermuid's deck and stats are pretty primed for the post Scotty world that we are currently living in. He's got a quick quick arts buster buster deck and a quick type noble phantasm. And all of his quick cards, including his noble phantasm, have some very impressive hit counts. 4 hits on his quick cards and 10 hits on his quick type noble phantasm means Diermuid is going to be really good at generating both stars as well as NP gauge, allowing him to refund his noble phantasm after using it and getting into some pretty impressive, pretty damaging loops with one caveat. If you look at Saber Diermuid's stats, we've got a 10,048 attack which honestly isn't that super great. It could be better. And honestly, there are going to be times where we want it to be better because of his focus on quick cards. But if you give him a decent enough quick support, you can end up sort of fixing that and watching Diermuid put out some pretty good numbers. I'm going to just quickly mention that Diermuid has Riding B, which gives him an 8% quick card effectiveness boost just because of how well it ties into his first skill and his most important one, Mana Burst Leap Rank A. This increases Diermuid's quick card effectiveness by 10-20% to for one turn, increases his attack by 10-20% to for one turn, and also gives him Evade on that exact same turn, and this skill is on a 5 turn cooldown. Now it is a very difficult thing having your Evade, your attack boost, and your quick card boost all tied into the exact same skill. What this usually means for most players is that they are not going to be using this skill for the purposes of the evade. You're more often than not going to be using it on turns Diermuid is able to make a full quick chain with his Noble Phantasm to increase your effectiveness and overall damage. So make sure you keep that in mind when this skill's on cooldown and be sure to max this skill first to get the most out of those attack and star drop gains. Diermuid's second skill is Honor of the Knights of Fiona rank B. This increases his star gather rate for 3 turns by 300-600% to and also grants him 5-15 to 15 critical stars on the turn it is activated. Now, the big thing about this skill is the fact that it gives that star gather for 3 turns. With Diermuid being a saber, he's already got about average star gather, so this is going to ensure that more of those stars go towards him, especially if you're pairing him with some of the more star heavy support options that we're going to mention over in the allies section. However, this skill still only grants on top of that 5 to 15 critical stars, and overall when it comes to sinking in those skill points, the overall weight bonus isn't really as huge as we might want it to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and recommend you max this skill last, because even at 300%, it's still gonna be doing a pretty decent job. And Diermuid's last skill, which I guarantee I'm going to butcher, is Bagel Talk Ripples of Passion rank B+. This increases his defense by 20 to 30% for three turns, but more importantly, it increases his NP gain by 20 to 30% for three turns. This skill is on a five turn cooldown, which is really, really nice on skills that have a three turn uptime. This is going to substantially increase Diermuid's overall NP gain, is going to grant him a lot of refund off of his 10 hit noble phantasm. Those of you who might have Edmund Dantes are already well aware of how this works with his golden rule ability, and it's going to be leading to some pretty impressive windows of burst damage from Diermuid. Again, like with the first skill, you're going to be using this usually for its offensive capabilities rather than its defensive ones. Go ahead and max this skill second. Tiermuid's Noble Phantasm is Moral Talk rank B. This deals damage to an enemy 1200 to 2000%. Again, this is one of those Noble Phantasms where you'd want to get it to NP2 if possible, because the damage jump from NP1 to NP2 is very substantial. This also removes all defensive buffs from the enemy, your defense ups, your evades, your invincibles, those are all going to go away, but that applies 
after damage is dealt, which is something that's really, really holding this Noble Phantasm back. I honestly love it when noble phantasms do buff removal before damage it just makes them overall more effective but that is not the case with the not to say his noble phantasm won't deal damage you just need to be mindful of how this works so you don't end up wasting a turn when it comes to planning and of course on overcharge this does have a chance to inflict death on the enemy when it comes to using this noble phantasm i would definitely recommend using this first in your NP chains. Not only does this have that added effect of adding the defensive buff removal, but if that doesn't help Diermuid, it's going to help any of your other servants down the line when they follow up to deal more of that damage. And with him being a quick servant, generating a lot of stars, and dealing a bunch of crit damage, having that buff removal is going to lead to your following quick cards dealing a pretty substantial amount of damage. So if you gotta sacrifice it for the buff removal, not a lot is gonna be totally lost. For DR Muid, some of your best bets for allies are gonna be just your standard supporters for any quick type damage dealer. So of course your Skahawk Scotty and your Osakabe Hime, if you of course are looking for a jack of all trades to fit into your spots, Waver is always a good decision. There are two other characters I definitely do want to mention who are a little more niche, but can definitely provide help for Diermuid if you go about planning them right. And that is going to be Kron as well as Surma Yi. Now the big thing with Kron is of course using a method I always talk about on the channel, and that is the Golden Catches the Cart method with him. Go ahead, pop both of his last two buffs on Diermuid, swap him out so he doesn't end up eating all of your stars, and you will have a fairly well buffed frontline servant who already has 20 critical stars to play with. It's pretty nice. When it comes to Surma Yi, the nice benefits she has are the chance to increase an ally's NP gauge and that ally's attack as well, so you are going to be increasing Diermuid's subpar attack. A lot of people don't really think he deals as much damage as he could if you're not sinking all you can into those quick cards, so this definitely does help. Of course, her first ability, Tactician's Advice, is going to tack on an additional 10% NP gauge, so that is going to be very, very helpful. And after her overall strengthening quest that gives her Volumen Hydra Gyrum EX, she is going to grant 10-20% to 20 NP gauge on top of that. So you're going to be able to grant your allies overall 50% NP gauge, this gives Diermwood a lot more room to play around with certain craft essences. But you gotta watch out for her star gather. Maybe use a plug suit method with her as well. Pop all of her buffs, go ahead, pull her out, and bring in another ally who isn't going to eat up all of those stars. When it comes to your craft essences on Diermwood, you generally want to go for quick effectiveness, NP strength, as well as starting NP gauge if possible. Promise, having that extra starting NP gauge and having a Scotty, a Waver, a Surma Yi on your team, that is going to help you a lot when it comes to coming out of the gate with him and starting to get that extra damage and those extra stars and that extra NP gain. So when it comes to freebie craft essences, my best recommendation has to be One Summer from the Fate Extra CCC event. This grants you a starting 50% NP gauge, 10% NP strength, and 10% quick card effectiveness. This grants Diermwood a little bit in every single stat he could possibly want. Of course, Golden Sumo is always a fantastic pick for any main attacker. You're giving up a little bit of that star gen that you would get from the quick card effectiveness boost, but you're getting an overall boost to attack that he does need to be stronger. If you wanna focus instead on NP strength and NP gain, I can definitely recommend, if you happen to have this, Distant Pilgrimage from the Apocrypha Inheritance of Glory event. This grants starting NP gauge, NP strength, and NP gain, and is overall just a really good craft essence for your NP focus characters. And if you don't have 
any of these as an option and you're really 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 pressed for an overall boost to craft essence you can always give him holy night sign this is quick card effectiveness and critical strength it doesn't offer that starting np gauge that we're looking for but it does offer him bonuses to quick effectiveness and bonuses to crits which he will be doing plenty of so as far as our command codes go, I'm going to go ahead and design this around which types of command codes I think are best on each of Diermuid's cards. You probably won't be able to put all of these command codes on each type of card, but when you see generally what I'm going for, you're going to be able to sub in and out other command codes you have. So for arts cards, I gotta recommend the Crest of Titan's Pit. This increases the NP gain rate of the engraved card by 5%. It is a super simple command code boost, but it is gonna give Diermwood that NP gain that he desires. When it comes to quick cards, I've gotta recommend the one that carries fortune. This is a three star command code. When engraved on a quick card, it increases the star absorption of that card by 1%. 100%. So by making sure all of our stars are flowing to our quick cards, we are not only just making sure our stars are flowing to Diermwood's primary source of damage, but also his primary source of NP gain and star generation as well. You're going to be doing a lot of quick brave chains or maybe even QQA chains with this guy, so make sure those stars are going where you want to see them. And for Buster cards, I'm just going to go ahead and recommend the Blades of Nintendo Raku. This, when engraved on a Buster card, increases the critical damage of that card by 20%. We know Diarmuid's going to crit a lot. We know that Buster cards really aren't good for anything but damage. So why not just make them better at the one thing they are good at? Overall, a lot of people consider Saber Diarmuid the quick Lancelot. And I've really got to agree. Saber Diarmuid has a lot of phenomenal ways to put out some incredibly powerful burst damage. Yes, he does have a couple weaknesses here and there. He does have a lot of his buffs tied to specific all-in-one skills. So sometimes you're going to have to pick and choose on certain skills in order to keep him alive and overall lose out on damage. But if you're doing what people are doing in FGO anyways, which is building your entire support structure around whoever your main servant is, this is going to be a minor inconvenience for you at best. Diarmuid is going to be able to put out the damage he needs to with a quick support or even a waiver, and he is going to be able to do that consistently, regenerate the NP gain he needs to do it all over again, and he's going to generate enough stars to crit the entire time while he does it. Diarmuid is honestly a fan fantastic character and well worth spending your saint quartz on though don't worry about throwing it all at him in the current banner he's on because he does get permanently added to the summon pool so he can spook you at any time if you have any additional thoughts on Saber Diarmuid, go ahead and chuck all of those down in the comment section below. I know I've seen a couple of people on Twitter really excited to get this character, so if you are one of those people, go ahead and let me know how he's performing down in your party. If you think I did a good job here, you can always hit me up on the Patreon, and you can always watch me stream on Twitch, and finally, if you want to talk some FGO or any other games at all, the Discord is always open to you. This is Kawaii 50 hoping you have a phenomenal day, and I'll see y'all in the next video.